We're going to talk about your book, As You Wish. When your publisher suggested we do this, they just sent me a email text of this novel, so I had no clue coming into it. You know, what it was, what kind of book it was, who you were, I knew nothing. And my first thought was of The Princess Bride. Of right? course. Which I've never seen, but hey, on principle, because the people in my office all love it. And they say to each other, as you wish, and give each other this knowing look. I'm like, oh God, not Princess Bride <laughs> fan fiction. I don't think I can stand it. So, but then I'm reading it and I'm thinking, oh, so it's this probably junior high novel about teens who get wishes and learn that wishes aren't, they're all cracked up to be. I can deal with that. But then as I'm reading, it just gets darker and darker <laughs> and darker. And my question is, did you know how dark this book was going to get? When I very first wrote the story, when I started writing, I had the main character much younger. He was 15 turning 16, as opposed to in the final book, he is 17 turning 18. And I was starting to work, I started to work the story around him at, as a 15 year old and something just felt incredibly, incredibly off. And I couldn't, I was having so much trouble writing. I kept getting tripped up. And I finally realized that when you're talking about wishes and how wishes can go wrong, it's not really that lighthearted. People's lives are ruined. Right. And so- Oh, we learned that. <laughs> yes. I realized I can't have this be a 16th birthday because even the difference between that was 16. Your original plan yes. that at 16, they right. would get their wish. The difference between 16 and 18 is really quite huge. You grow a lot in that time period. And so I aged the characters up and had this wish day be during their 18th birthday. And it sort of meshed with the story better. And I was sort of able to have that darkness and not have such writer's block getting hung up on uh, the story just not working quite right. I love that it stays complicated, though, that you know we see these wishes turn sort of bite people in the ass, right? That right. they think they're getting one thing and it's something else, the way it turns out. But then our hero has a conversation with someone who, because he'd gone around researching what people had wished for and how it had worked out for them. And he's like, see, it doesn't work. But she says, you know, you picked people for whom it didn't work. It does work for some people. And I really like the way you keep us, it's not on edge exactly, but like with our hero whose name is escaping me at the moment. Eldon. Eldon. That sometimes he's a real jerk. He is. Sometimes you root for him. Sometimes I'm crying at things that are happening to Eldon. That you kept us off balance. That's the term I'm looking for, for what these characters are going through. And that's quite an achievement. Thank you. I think you've really done a great job with this book. Thank so you so much. I was so pleased to have read it. All right, so now I have one completely different question. Okay. You live in Las Vegas. I sure do. Yes. I live out by the mountains, so I get I get all of the beautiful desert scenery and. I thought you captured sort of the creepiness that can be Thank Nevada you. well in this book. Cause I is... love rural Nevada so much, and it's a very unexplored area of the country, and not many people have had a chance to go there. So it was really, really exciting to be able to write about what I consider my home, like the true Las Vegas area. Not all the flashing lights, but the odd Mojave Desert. I remember stopping at a truck stop once in the Mojave Desert and you know the wait waitresses all had little name tags so there's like Joan, Jane, Witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought this is Nevada. Welcome to Nevada. Fantastic. And welcome to you Chelsea. It was great to be able to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you.